In this video, we're going to take a look at some two-dimensional situations, so a force applied to wheels, to better understand that torque is the cross product of force and radius. All right, so let's go ahead in this problem, we see we have an eight Newton force, so we can go ahead and write that down as eight Newtons applied to this wheel. The problem says to answer the following questions relative to the center of the wheel. Alright, so the center of the wheel is right here, and we have our 8 Newton force in that location. So when we say torque is the cross product of force and radius, we are going to measure the radius perpendicular to the force. So what that means is I'm going to start by highlighting what I'm going to call the line of action. So the line of action is a line that goes directly through the force. Since this force is acting horizontally, I'm going to draw my, that line horizontally as well. To measure my radius or torque arm, we're going to count from the center perpendicularly to the line of action. So not to the force, but to the line of action itself. If we see that the scale here is that each box represents 10 centimeters, then this torque arm is going to be uh, 20 centimeters. Multiplying the torque, multiplying the force times the radius, we get 160 newton centimeters as our torque. Now in the last video we talked about torque on the left side versus torque on the right side, but torque is really measured as clockwise or counterclockwise. So if I'm pulling to the right on the upper half of the wheel, that's going to try to make this wheel spin in this direction. All right, and that direction is known as clockwise. So we know that clocks spin this way, so that would be clockwise, anything that goes that way, anything in the opposite direction is going to be counterclockwise. All right, so let's take a look at another example. So in this case, we have a six Newton force acting upwards on the right side of the wheel. Let's start by drawing our line of action. So here is our line of action. So again, since this force was going upwards, we're going to draw that line of action vertically. Now we can write down that our force is six newtons. Now for our radius, is going to be measured from the center to that line of action. Since that line of action was going up and down, our radius, we're going to count to the right. So remember that the torque arm and the line of action should always be perpendicular, so they should always hit at right angles. If the, in this case, since the line of action was vertical, the torque arm should be horizontal. So counting that, we have 10, 20, 30, 40 centimeters as our radius, and that gives us 240 newton centimeters as our torque. This force is on the right side of the wheel, pulling upwards, so if I start drawing that circle, I can see, okay, that's going to try to make this wheel spin in this direction, which is called counterclockwise. Moving along to our next problem, we have an 8 Newton force, and let's start by drawing our line of action. So you'll notice something interesting that's very different about this one, is that our line of action actually passes through the center of the circle. So there is no radius, and in fact, any time you have a force directed directly towards or directly away from or at the center, it's going to provide zero radius and zero torque. Anytime you have zero torque, we're not causing a rotation, and so your answer for the direction would be neither clockwise nor counterclockwise. All right, and our next problem is a little bit different. It's only asking us for the torque, but it's asking us for the torques for a few different objects. Let me start drawing my lines of actions a little bit darker. So for force one, we have this vertical line of action. My torque arm would be from the center. This is the vertical force. Our torque arm is horizontal and our torque arm there is five boxes or 50 centimeters. So for torque one, that is going to be 50 times three, 
which gives me 150 newton centimeters. Since we're pulling down on the left hand side, we're trying to cause a torque in the direction I drew with the red arrow, which is counterclockwise. So just to remind ourselves that this direction is counterclockwise, this direction is clockwise. All right, so I'm gonna erase so we don't get confused when we start taking a look at our next forces. So our next, next force, force number two, its line of action, well, it's located at the center. Anytime we have a force at the center or pointing directly towards or away from the center, then the torque is going to be zero. And our answer for the direction will be neither. Our next torque, caused by force three, is another vertical force. So I can count the torque arm this way. So 10, 20, 30. And so if I do 30 times six, I get 180 Newton centimeters. This torque is pulling downwards, which we try to make the wheel spin this way, which I see is clockwise. All right, our last force Again, remember we're counting directly to the line of action, making sure these are perpendicular so you don't actually have to count up to where the force is, but just to the line of action. That gives us a radius of 40 centimeters times a force of four newtons, which gives us 160 newton centimeters. Acting, well, on this side, if we pull up on the right side, that would make our wheel spin in this direction which is counterclockwise. All right, this problem asks us to calculate the net torque. So be careful on this. We're not looking at left side versus right side. Torques act clockwise or counterclockwise. So counterclockwise, I have a 150 Newton centimeter torque and a 180 Newton centimeter torque, which gives me a total of, my fault, I have 150 and 160. So I looked at the two that were counterclockwise. So 150 plus 160 gives me 310 Newton centimeters. Clockwise, I just had 180. Newton centimeters. So I have more torque acting counterclockwise. That means my net torque will be counterclockwise. And I had an extra, well, 310 minus 180 gives me 130 Newton centimeters. All right, a couple more. So in this problem, we have some unknown forces, but we'll notice in this problem, it says determine all unknowns that will keep the wheel at rest. So we have to balance the torques, which we'll see is step one, and then we also have to balance the forces. All right, so let's start by counting our radiuses. So for force one, our line of action goes right through the center. And so that tells us that for force one, we're going to have no torque. And so neither direction. For torque two, our torque arm is 30 centimeters long. So I can do 30 times that's a 10, gives me 300 Newton centimeters. Since we're pulling down on the left hand side, that's trying to spin us this way. So this torque is acting clockwise. All 
and for force 3. This is our line of action, our torque arm is going to be 50 centimeters so I know that my radius is 50 but I don't know what my force is yet alright so but I do know I can figure out that this torque will act in this direction which is counterclockwise All right, so in this problem, I know that the wheel has to be rest, at rest. The forces have to be balanced. So that tells me that I actually do know my net torque. Since the torques are balanced, the net torque has to be zero and in neither direction. Well, if I have 300 newton centimeters clockwise, then I have 300 newton centimeters counterclockwise. So for force three, I know the force well, I don't know the force. I know the radius is 50 centimeters. And I know the torque has to be 300 newton centimeters. Rearranging the torque equation, I know that force equals torque divided by radius. And that would give me 6 newtons. So I can go ahead and fill out that force 3 is 6 newtons. So we have ba now balanced our torques, but we also need to balance the forces. So when you are balancing forces, they don't have to do with rotation. Don't think about clockwise and counterclockwise. Think about up and down. I know I have a total of 10 newtons pointed downwards, so I need 10 newtons pointed upwards. So force 3 with 6 newtons, I can do 10 minus 6 and get force 1 as 4 newtons, so now I have 10 newtons down and 4 plus 6 or 10 newtons upwards. One last problem to look at is when we have a diagonal force. So in this problem, I'm actually not going to draw my line of action, but I want to take a look at my torque arm going from the, for from the center to the force. Never have a diagonal force, I want to break it down into components. Now I know that my let me label some trig stuff. So my angle theta is 27 degrees. 7 newtons is my hypotenuse. The angle always touches the adjacent side. And the opposite side is my vertical component. Now my adjacent side is pointed directly away from the center. So I actually don't really care about the adjacent side. It's not causing any torque but my opposite side is perpendicular to my 50 centimeter torque arm. So if I can figure out my opposite side, I can figure out my torque. So I know the equation opposite equals h times sine of theta. So plugging in 7 sine 27. I get 3.18 newtons and I can do 3.18 times 50 and that gives me 159 newton centimeters as my torque. Alright, so keep in mind that in this problem since the force was located a horizontal, the torque arm was horizontal, I looked at my vertical force. If my torque arm had been vertical, then I would need to look at my horizontal component. So again, if I pull, just looking at this opposite side, this vertical side, if I pull up on the left side, on the right side of the wheel, then my wheel would try to spin in the, let's see, that is the counterclockwise direction.